uh, different type Starting. of meaning. Oh, okay. Welcome everybody. Um, we'll be starting in just a few minutes, so hang tight. Hey everyone, um, if you're just tuning in, I think we're going to be starting in about one minute. All right, I think we're about ready to get started. Um, so first of all, hello everybody. Um, welcome to the 
District and International Documents webinar presented by the CNH District Laws and Regulations Committee 2018-2019. Um, first of all, we're going to be introducing tonight's hosts, starting with Andy. Hi, everyone. Um, th uh, it's nice to meet you all. I am the creative assistant. Uh, I am from UC Riverside, and I am a second year psychology major. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wayne Chang, and I'm serving as your district secretary. Um, I'm also a third year film major at San Francisco State University. Hey, everyone. My name is Dylan Huynh. I go to Orange Coast College. I currently serve as the Southern Liaison, and I am a second year marketing and Asian linguistics major. Perfect. Now, uh, moving on to our table of contents. Um, basically, we're just going to preview everything that we're going to be going over in this webinar. Um, first, I'll be taking you through some basic information just to give you a bit of background um, before we delve into like the later topics. Um, and afterwards, Andy will be taking us through the district bylaws and operating procedures. And after that, Dylan will be talking about the international bylaws and policy code. And finally, I'll round out our presentation by talking about some of the processes that go behind these um, documents. Um, at the very end, uh, you'll get a chance to ask your questions and we'll answer them here. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So here's some basic information. I think the most basic question you can ask is, um, what are district and international documents and why are they important? Um, so for So basically, you can kind of think of it as a sort of constitutional document that establishes the for our organization. Um, district and international documents are important because they provide rules and guidance or guidelines um, for our organization and for our members. So our international bylaws and policy code are the most broad documents because um, they provide basic definitions for international district and club structures. District bylaws and operating procedures are more specific. Um, to the criteria of our district, which is California, Nevada, Hawaii. For example, in our district bylaws and operating procedures, we define our unique set of district chairs, we set our dues, and we outline our divisional boundaries. Now, at the club level, these are the most specific bylaws because they're tailored to one individual club. These provide to the international and district bylaws, but they also define um, the club's unique set of committees, they define elections processes, dues, et cetera. Uh, next up, Andy is going to be talking about our district bylaws. Hey, everyone. So what are the district bylaws? Um, the district bylaws basically outline um, officer and chair responsibilities and protocols, um, administrative aspects of the district, basically. Um, and so Basically, the district, um, the district bylaws are like a rule book for how the people in charge should run everything. Um, and it defines the structure of the organization um, and it establishes roles of officers, members, and committees. Um, the district bylaws primarily pertain to um, the district board and it's split into 13 articles. Um, and so how can I, as a general member or a board member, like utilize the district bylaws? Um, you can use them by looking at the roles of the district board members committee to see like what they do and how they do it. Um, next, I'll be talking about the district operating procedures. So the district operating procedures basically lays the foundation for the work accomplished by the district and sets the laws for members. Um, why is it important? Um, the DOPs um, basically provides definitions of key terms and explanations of case scenarios um, as well as creating uniformity and acts as an instruction manual. Um, and how would I use this? Um, basically, the district operating procedure um, provides information on um, like what the di district can provide, like DECON, FTC, um, how divisions will be split up. And if you're running for district board, I highly recommend looking at this document. Um, next, Dylan will be talking about international bylaws. Okay, so hey everyone. So the international bylaws, um, like Wayne said, are some of the most broad, I would say. And um, there are standing rules in place to assist in the functioning of our organization as a whole. If you guys don't, 
don't know, our organization is international and there is an international board. And this, um, these bylaws set in specific requirements and regulations for our organization to follow. And they also explain the responsibilities of the board officers on the international level. The bylaws also allow our organization to function efficiently and uniformly. They uh, make sure that districts are following the same regulations, so there's uniform uniformity throughout our organization. They also set the guideline for international officers, districts, etc. For example, the international bylaws provide a guideline or a general officer structure that clubs must follow, which is president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, etc. And then moving on to the International Policy Code. This is a list of governing documents the international officers and the districts of our organization must follow, and they explain the details of our organization, such as our mission statement. So um, the International Policy Code also provides the districts with general information on how to function. Um, they give proper procedures and courses of action in certain situations, for example, the removal of an international officer, and may act as precedents, precedents for future decisions if um, there isn't, there's, there's something that isn't really clarified within the bylaws or anything like that. Um, the international policy code can be used to um, decide And we will be moving on to, oh, yeah. We'll be moving on to the processes by Wayne. All right, so um, the first process that we're gonna be talking about is creating club bylaws um, for the first time. So if there is a new club, like you're a chartering club, um, one of the most like seemingly daunting uh, tasks is creating club bylaws for the first time. Um, but it's actually quite simple. So the Circle K International website, um, which is www.circlek.org, actually provides a template for you to fill out. Um, all you really need is basic information about your club, including the name of your club, sponsoring Kiwanis Club, your um, specified dues, et cetera. Um, after this document is completed, you'll send your bylaws to your advisors, as well as the Laws and Regulations Committee, which is us. Um, this is basically just for us to build our database and to have you know, records of every single club's bylaws. Next, I'll also be talking about amending bylaws on the club, district, and international level. Um, first of all, uh, all um, proposals for amendments um, for the bylaws must be, they, they must be proposed by a member or club in good standing. Um, and for the club level, um, it requires a two-thirds vote of the membership to be adopted at a general meeting, whereas the district bylaws required a two-thirds vote at the House of Delegates at the annual district convention. For international bylaws, um, it requires a two-thirds vote at the House of Delegates at the Circle K International Convention. Um, one important thing to note is that for district and international um, amendment proposals, they also require um, Kiwanis approval. So uh, for example, if a proposal is voted through at the House of Delegates at either District Convention or Circle K International Convention, um, it still needs to go through uh, either the Kiwanis Committee or um, you know, the Circle K International Board of Trustees um, or just like the Kiwanis entity. And it has to be approved by them before it gets put into the bylaws. So technically it could still um, be shut down at that point. Cool, so that's pretty much um, all we had for our presentation, but now we're gonna go into our Q&A and answer some of your guys' questions. Um, the first question we have is, um, what if we, a club, um, is unsure about something and there's nothing uh, written in the bylaws about it? Um, the best thing to do in this scenario would definitely be to 
run it by a district board member, perhaps your lieutenant governor um, or any other district board member you know, um, or to contact the district admin in a, administrator directly, which is Armando Velasquez, um, preferably via email, and to just ask them. Um, but other than that, uh, I think it's important just to um, use common sense and uh, yeah. Um, the next question is, do clubs need to have an orientation officer? Uh, no, you do not need to have one. Um, just a quick note on that uh, last question. So at the previous um, House of Delegates at the Circle K International Convention in Chicago, uh, there was, um, it was, it was voted through um, to be optional. So every club has the option to have an and rec uh, recruitment and um, orientation officer. Um, Alvin from Irvine Valley College asks, um, is it true that CNH is the only district that does um, SERFs, also known as the club event report form? Um, to my knowledge, I believe CNH is the only district that does SERFs um, simply because other districts um, have their own systems and their own ways of recording events and um, getting accurate records for hours. Um, but I don't think any of them are like better or worse than the surf. Um, I think it's just a different way of doing things. Um, also, even some um, clubs in CNH don't use surfs because they have their own um, ways of doing it. Um, for example, some clubs utilize um, their own websites to uh, record information for events that are put into the MRF. Okay, so our next question is, is Circle K a 501c3 nonprofit organization? And um, the answer is no, we are a 501c4. Um, the difference is a 501c3 um, nonprofit focuses mainly on charitable purposes. Uh, while we do, uh, we do fundraise for charity, um, 501c4 nonprofits focus on social welfare as well. Uh, our next question is, is there a deadline to submit proposals to amend the uh, district bylaws? And what is the process of submitting a proposal to amend the bylaws? Um, so the bylaws or district bylaws can only be amended at once a year at DCON. And so how a person may go about doing that is that you can um, propose anything to anyone on district board. And if it's approved, um, then you and that and your division's LTG We'll present it at the district board meeting and it will go through a vote and then it will be sent to the House of Delegates at DCON. Um, I believe the deadline is at your club elections, but Wayne, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, the last opportunity you'll get to submit um, proposals to amend the district bylaws uh, will actually be for our January district board meeting. Um, which is going to take place on January 27th. Um, so you'll need to get the proposal in several weeks before, so in early January. There's no hard deadline yet, but um, you'll be seeing that uh, very soon, towards the end of uh, 2018. Um, but moving on to the uh, next question. Um, for small changes to club bylaws, do you have to go through revisions in general, or do you have to go through revisions with general members? Um, so usually, um, if you're looking to amend your club bylaws, you'd have to have that amendment voted on by um, your club's dues paid membership. But if it's something small, like fixing grammatical errors, or um, if it's anything small like that, like just small details, um, you don't have to, as long as it doesn't change the meaning or objective of that portion of your bylaws.
Um, I think we have another question. Um, so if my permanent home is in another division, uh, do I need to do I need approval to attend events um, for that division? So for example, um, so I'm part of Golden Gate Division, but um, if my permanent home, like if my hometown um, was in uh, Magic Kingdom, um, the question is basically asking, do I need approval to attend Magic Kingdom events? Uh, no, you are free to um, attend uh, those events while you're back home. For example, if you're home for the summer, then you can attend those events. Um, I think someone in the comments was asking about an earlier question um, regarding uh, our district surf. Um, I guess like other ways to record um, like event information. Um, I know like a few clubs like they use their website in a way where I, I believe members can just enter like basic information into a system that's like similar to a Google form, and then um, that information is sent to the club secretary for them, um, for the secretary to input into the monthly report form, which is sent to the district. Um, there's another question. Um, would service hours be granted for volunteering for an event hosted by a for-profit organization? So according to our district bylaws, um, to receive service hours, they only count if you're volunteering for a nonprofit organization. So if you volunteered for an event that was hosted by a for-profit organization, um, you would still get those hours, but they wouldn't be counted as service hours. They would either go into leadership or fellowship. So uh, we do have another question. So someone asked, are we allowed to change our bylaws once it's already or once they're already set? And the answer is yes, but uh, make sure that um, once you update your bylaws, you need to send an updated copy to your um, liaison. And for um, each division, um, for North, which is Capital, Sunset, and Golden Gate, your liaison would be Sammy. For Central, um, or for Central divisions, that's Central Coast. Foothill and Desert Oasis, your liaison would be Sarah. And for Magic Kingdom, Metro, and Paradise, I would be your liaison. So the next question is, um, what events require an ERF? Um, all events that have clubs outside your division or Qantas branch or uh, any large scale event that has overnight or is a long travel does require an ERF. Um, safe bet is just fill one out and send it to your um, division advisor and get it approved as soon as possible. Um, if you have any more questions, you can either fill out the um, Q&A form or you can go ahead and ask them in the chat. Um, oh, okay, we just got a question from the Q&A form. Uh, why is it important to have bylaws for a volunteer organization? Um, I think it's like, in general, it's important to have bylaws for any organization because um, like an organization needs structure. Um, 
of some sort and it needs you know a framework and it needs guidelines um, to keep keep it consistent um, over years and I think one important thing is uh, bylaws are not only just a governing document they also kind of serve as a legal document um, so for like an official organization uh, it's very important. Someone else asked, um, do divisions have bylaws or do all divisions within CNH run the same? Um, divisions do not have bylaws. Um, divisions operate under um, the divisions are just uh, like a, they're just like sections of the district. So they follow the um, district and international bylaws. Um, so the next question is, um, if we wanted to go to another divisions event, how would we go about to get approval? Um, so what you can do is you can contact your lieutenant governor to get the emails for both um, district administrator Mondo and your um, division advisor. Um, and then you just email them, letting them know um, or asking for permission to attend said event um, and telling them the details of how you're getting there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you do also need to get approved to go to those events as well. So, yes. Um, so another question is, what events require an ERF? Um, and does KROC need an ERF? Um, any large scale event or any event that requires or any event that has people from outside your division coming needs the ERF, and so um, yes, KROC does need one, and yes. Okay, um, so someone asked, um, is it possible to have some amendments to some of the bylaws for international? And if so, how? Um, so the process to amend international bylaws, um, there, there's like a lot of different ways you could do it. Um, and it also depends on who's proposing that amendment. Like there's a different process for, um, a district proposing an amendment or a district board proposing an amendment, a club pro proposing an amendment, um, so on and so forth. But um, basically they all just require, um, basically what I said earlier about um, the club or the member being in good standing. Um, but uh, basically um, if it's like a club or a member proposing an amendment to the international bylaws, um, you'll run that through the house of delegates and um, have have it approved like by a two thirds vote before it moves on um, to the international conventions uh, house of delegates. So it, basically, it'll get endorsed um, at our own district convention first. So another question that we just got: um, someone asked. What role can the general membership play in regards to shaping the club bylaws, already considering that they can already vote on bylaw amendments? So um, general members play an important role in every club. They're the base of our organization. And if any general members have any concerns, feel free to bring up um, anything you would like to change to board officers. And um, Honestly, you play general members do play a huge role in shaping club bylaws because um, the bylaws do affect them. So you do have a say in what goes on.
Um, okay, so um, there was another question that basically asked, um, uh, what should we do um, if there are infractions um, to our club bylaws? Um, basically, clubs have the freedom to handle these um, pretty freely. Uh, so it's really up to the board to sort of figure out how you want to handle that, um, depending on your bylaws and the severity of the situation. Um, I would also recommend contacting your um, faculty advisor or Qantas advisor and ask them for further guidance um, if there are uh, serious infractions to your bylaws. Um, someone else asked, uh, are you able to volunteer with other clubs from another district? Um, so technically, I believe you should be able to. Um, but before that, you should contact our district administrator, Armando Velasquez, um, again, preferably via email. And um, basically, you would probably have to let him know um, your travel plans and housing plans, um, if it is uh, in another district. Um, this is just for safety reasons and to make sure that you have um, like a safe method of travel and everything. Um, but yeah, you, you would probably need to be approved by um, our district administrator. Uh, for anyone that can hear that question, it was, um, are you able to volunteer with other clubs from another district? Um, just contact our administrator. So another question, how can you make club bylaws and district slash international accessible to club members? So um, all the bylaws are on um, our district website. Uh, CNH Circle or our international website, which is just circlek.org um, under their respective um, categories on the website. But um, what some clubs can do is also, if you have a Facebook page, for example, you can add them into the files section. So um, clubs or club members can easily download them. If you have a club website, you can put them on your website, etc. Uh, the next question is, um, do we need approval to attend CKIX? Is there anything needed to attend? Um, so CK, attending CKIX, or um, it's called Tokei um, International Convention, uh, basically it's similar to like DCON and FTC where there will be forms um, that will be released later on, um, and you will be going through a series of filling things out, paying pretty similar to like the other events. Um, Yes. Yeah, you just need registration, and that's pretty much it. Uh, someone else asked, uh, do other districts share similar bylaws? Um, the answer is yes, actually. And this is because um, so International actually provides a um, district standard bylaws, which is basically just like um, a very basic template for district bylaws. And then um, districts take that and they sort of customize it um, in their own way, like they specify their chairs and their committees and everything. Um, but they all stem from like the same template. So yes, um, all the districts do share uh, very similar bylaws. Um, someone else asked, uh, how can clubs increase awareness of their bylaws to their members in creative ways? Um, so uh, one thing that we've actually started doing this year is a bylaws slash operating procedures fun fact um, on our laws and regulations office page. Uh, this, is, this just takes like a line or like a section of our district bylaws and um, explains it in a way that's like easier to understand. Um, and we just have one fun fact every two weeks. Um, and I think that this makes the bylaws much more 
manageable and less daunting for um, members and officers. So someone else asked, um, international bylaws trickle down to district and club bylaws, and district bylaws trickle down to club bylaws. Would these higher level bylaws be regulated more strictly from above than those at lower levels? Um, to clarify, based on our um, response concerning bylaw violations slash infractions, um, are club specific bylaws only up to the club officers um, to regulate? Okay, so uh, this question has like a, a few different parts. Um, so first, uh, would these higher level bylaws be regulated more strictly from above? Um, probably, probably like, I feel like they would be around the same. Like, so um, club bylaws and district bylaws have a lot of, like they share a lot of similarities to the international bylaws, like there's there's definitely like a common thread um, between levels, um, but I think club specific bylaws um, would definitely only be up to the club officers um, to regulate because there's not really any way for anyone else to um, do that just for that like individual club. Um, but yeah. So another question that we got, um, what criteria might define a bylaw amendment as necessary for the benefit of the club slash general membership in the future? So a couple of things you should consider, um, first of all, um, is the bylaw, is um, a similar um, kind of bylaw or amendment already in your club bylaws? You don't want to double up on it. Doesn't really make sense. Uh, a second thing, I think the most important thing is your member's safety. So um, if there is a safety concern of any kind, um, it should be evaluated as soon as possible. Um, other than that, it's up to um, your club and your board to decide whether or not um, the bylaw amendment is necessary. Um, if future boards or future club membership find that it isn't necessary, they can overrule it. The next question is, um, when is the deadline to submit proposals for district board meetings? Um, the deadline is 30 days before the um, board meeting, and I think the next one is January 27th. OK, um, I just wanted to add on to uh, one of the previous questions, because I feel like I didn't really um, understand it very well. But um, for the previous one that was asking about um, whether higher, higher level bylaws are regulated uh, more strictly than lower level ones, um, again, they, they do share a common thread. But um, basically, bylaws work in a way where um, club bylaws take precedence over district bylaws and inter international bylaws in the sense that um, club bylaws operate on the most strict, um, unlike the most strict terms. Uh, for example, um, in your club bylaws, you can specify that um, to be a member, uh, or actually, OK, a better example would be um, in your club bylaws, you can specify that a service hour is um, one and a half hours of service, whereas the district bylaws could be um, an hour and 15 minutes. And then the international bylaws could say um, it's just one hour. But as long as um, the standard is getting higher, uh, that's like that's possible for club bylaws to do.
So uh, we actually got a question about laws and regulations committee. Someone asked, um, is uh, laws and regulations committee's theme actually nuts? Uh, yes, our club, our club committee is nuts. Um, our mascot is an acorn. Um, if there are any final questions, please feel free to uh, type them in the chat, or you can fill out our uh, Q&A link. We'll keep it open for another few minutes. OK, someone else asked, um, what are some ways your committee is raising awareness about these policies and documents? Uh, well, first, um, on I think like the biggest way is just through social media. So on Facebook this year, um, we created the Laws and Regulations Office, which is basically, which is basically just like a group page um, where we can publicize uh, news about these documents. Um, I mentioned we post fun facts uh, earlier. Um, and we've, we've um, still been doing this on a pretty regular um, basis. Um, and we've also been releasing various like manuals and guides um, for things like the club event, the event request form, um, and stuff like that. So I think overall, our goal this year has just been to um, make the bylaws and just like the governing documents in general um, more accessible to general members and club officers, and just to make them feel less daunting um, by like making them graphically like um, more aesthetic, I guess, and just more inviting um, to the viewer. Um, but yeah. Just adding on to what Wayne said, uh, we do also host office hours. Um, Pretty, I would say sort of regularly. So if you do have any questions after this webinar um, and you don't really want to message us, feel free to join the office hours that we do post. So join the uh, Laws and Regulations Office page. Office hours are held um, usually twice a month, um, every other week. Um, so alternating between the fun facts and the um, office hours. Um, the links are always posted on our committee page, and if you'd like to be um, added to that, um, let one of us know or let um, one of the other li liaisons or the executive assistant know, and we can add you to it. Um, okay, so we got one more question. Um, someone asked, um, what are examples of bylaws? So you can find, well, first of all, you can find our um, district bylaws and operating procedures on um, www.cnhcirclek.org, um, which is our district website. You can find our official governing documents um, in the resources section. Um, and same for international bylaws and policy, their policy code. Um, you can find it at circlek.org. Um, so those are our uh, main two, like main governing documents. Um, but if you're referring to club bylaws, like if you're looking for examples to base your own club bylaws off, off of, um, again, I would recommend going to the international website, which is circlek.org. And then going into resources and um, the bylaws section, and they actually have a template for you to fill out. Um, so all you have to do is just fill out the name of your club um, and other basic information, and you'll be set to go. And I believe that was our final question. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to ask any of us or anyone 
on the Laws and Regulations Committee, and we'd be happy to answer it for you. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to be wrapping up here. Um, so I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight um, and supporting the uh, LNR Committee. Um, we've been working really hard on this. And I also want to thank the um, md &E Committee for helping us uh, put this webinar on. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone has a great night. And thank you for coming. Uh, do not forget to sign in if you would like to receive hours. <laughs>